hello. Hi, hi, I'm waiting for people to join. Hello, vintagey lover, how are you? Hello, Ari Foodie. How are you, darling? How are you? Today, we're celebrating a pretty big day. At least it's a big day for all the Lilith lovers and all the shadow workers out there. Black Moon Lilith enters Virgo. What a beautiful space to really explore our shadows and shadow work during this time. I'm going to wait a little while and just kind of riff as people find out that I'm on and all of that before we start pulling. Hello, Guiding Tarot. How are you? Um, the deck I'm using today, you guys have seen me use before. Um, I can never remember the names of my decks, but this is one of my favorite decks. You'll see why if you've never seen the cards, you'll see why in just a little bit. Hi, sunshine. I guess before we start reading, I'm really feeling called to, ugh, to pull. Mm. So our Ace of Cups comes up first, but it's coming in upside down. I'm sorry, our Ace of Swords. It's coming in upside down. During this tra this transit, during Black Moon Lilith and, and Virgo, this is the time where we don't necessarily need to think with our mind and when we really need to let our, our heart, our soul do the thinking, if you will. Sometimes we work too hard, do too much with what is happening up here in this 3D physical world and we we're too close is really what's coming through. We're too close to it. We're too close to what we need, to what we want, to what we deserve and desire. We want it too badly almost that we don't just let ourselves move intuitively. We tend to overthink decisions. We tend to overthink relationships. We tend to overthink friendships. We tend to overthink communicating with one another and even being visible. We tend to overthink it all and spirits really calling us in as we work with this transit, as we work with Black Moon Lilith's energy, the energy of release, right? Allowing ourselves to step into our shadows without fear, without worry, without any of this in order to really embody the release the energy around releasing negative thoughts around our shadows, we have to let go of the overthinking that we're doing. Stop overthinking it. I feel like that is a direct message for, for me as well, right? We all tend to overthink things. Every single last one of us. And then the devil comes in as well as our second card, right? And if you've been with me for a while, you know the devil card, this card here, this is about choice. This is about understanding, yeah, I can choose to hang out with the devil or I can choose to do something else. I can choose my outcome. I'm not necessarily a product of my outcome. I think that's something that Virgo does really well is choose their outcome, right? Virgonian energy is really, really, really good about controlling the situation. And I think we put so much emphasis as a collective on not being controlling, on letting go of control and all of that stuff. But what if we just let go of that? Sometimes we do need to control the situation. Sometimes we do need to control the outcome. Sometimes we need to take some ownership about why we're in a specific spot or location at that point of time. If we don't take the ownership, then how can we fix it, right? Hi, Sparkle with Anticipation. Hello, Nichelle. Hello, GB3. And once we take the ownership, look at what's around the corner. Our Ten of Cups comes in to say hello. Our beautiful card of happiness. Remember, nine ends a cycle, ten begins a new one. So once we actually take control of the situation and we allow ourselves to say, hey, I have a choice here. When we turn off our earth brain, when we turn off what's happening here, 
right? And we turn on our intuitive body, we become that embodied healer, that embodied intuitive, that embodied knower, that embodied seeker, that person that feels confident in what they desire and deserve. And when we actually take a stand and recognize, okay, I don't want this, but I do want this. I do want that, but I don't want that. And we take some ownership over where we are in life and where we want to be. We have nothing but blessings coming for us around the corner. And that's what Black Moon Lilith loves to give us is blessings around the corner. There's nothing to fear here when we're working with Black Moon Lilith energy or when we're working with shadow working energy. Absolutely nothing to fear here. When we embrace our shadow, when we integrate our shadow, we are leaving more room for expansion and more room for self-awareness. And when we become more self-aware, we become more embodied in who we are. We become more confident in our message that we have for the universe. And that, my friend, is the goal. When we walk with this air of confidence, this air of breath, this air of knowing, then that which you desire becomes attainable. Right? Virgo does that so well. Virgo has this air of knowing so well. This charisma around what they want, what they desire, what they deserve comes to their energy so easily, or at least they, they uh, put on a good show. So fascinating. The lovers comes in right afterwards. Now, you may or may not know, but the devil is the teacher card for the lovers, which is really interesting. The devil is my teacher card. My soul card is the lovers. So um, this is really fascinating that my favorite deck is uh, reading me to filth right now, hunty. Um, but the lovers also, again, because these cards are connected, their meaning is also connected, right? So we have this energy around choice coming in the room as well, right? Look at the card. This energy of duality comes into play. It's a six card. As above, so below, the first rule of witchcraft. You cannot have one without the other. So although you may feel like you are deaf, dumb, and blind and stuck in certain situations and or triggers and or triggered responses around your shadow and shadow work, you don't necessarily have to be. It doesn't have to be that way. You know what I mean? It can be something different. And whenever we see the lovers, we are reminded that we live in a world full of duality. As above, so below. So although you may be feeling one way around what you desire, what you deserve, around your connection with spirit, with source, around the work that you do, around the money that you make, around the way that you present, around whatever it is, that feeling is something that will, the pendulum will swing. Thank you, spirit. That's really what I'm getting at. The pendulum has to swing because we live in a world filled with duality as above, so below. You cannot, you will not have one without the other. And that's really important for you to remember. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So listen, our five, six, seven of pentacles, I say five, six, seven, because I was counting the Roman numerals here, five, six, seven of pentacles comes in. Okay. But it's coming in upside down. Our seven of pentacles is about doing the work. And now that it's coming in upside down, what does it actually mean? It means stop doing the work. This is a direct message to all of us for the Black Moon Lilith in Virgo. Virgo is one of our signs that is very incredibly associated with work. Hello, Luna Estrellas. Hello, Marv Wilson. Hello, Amir. Hello, Underwater Witch. Hello, El Bell. Hello, GB. Hello, everybody who's still here. Um, I'm doing an intuitive tarot reading um, directly because uh, Black Moon Lilith has entered Virgo today. Right now, Black Moon Lilith sits at zero degrees of Virgo. And so that means that when it comes to our shadows and our shadow work, a lot of us, especially if we have heavy Virgo placements, or if we just want to tap into that Virgonian energy, have the opportunity to work with our shadows through a Virgonian lens, which I think is a beautiful opportunity because Virgo is this sign of structure and neatness and orderly fashion, right? Like Virgo comes off very put together. And when things are not put together, Virgo kind of has a conniption, right? But what can we learn about putting things together and also about letting things go the way that we're supposed to. Where can we learn? What is the message? And so this next card coming in, the Seven of Pentacles upside down, 
Some of us need to not do the work. Some of us are overworking. Some of us are overtired. Some of us are over trying to be way too perfect. Some of us are doing too much. In general, some of us are doing too much. Try, like what's really coming through is trying to get them to love me. That's what came through for whoever needed to receive that message. There you go. Doing too much trying to get them to love me. Doing too much trying to be present. Doing too much trying to be here. Doing too much trying to make the money. Working too much. Being too unavailable for your partner. Being too avail available for somebody, right? Slow down, this card is saying, as we come into Virgonian energy, which makes a lot of sense. If you remember, I put the card back in the deck, but the first card that we pulled was the Ace of Swords upside down. And the Ace of Swords is about intellect. It's about using this brain here. Coming in upside down, this is about disconnecting from what's up here and reconnecting to the the upper body, right? The over soul, the higher self, right? And I feel like the Seven of Pentacles is mimicking this energy a lot in a way because it's coming in upside down. It's about really unplugging from the 3D a little bit. And remember, Virgo is an earth sign. And so maybe with Black Moon Lilith entering Virgo, Black Moon Lilith, the patron deity of Starseed Shadows, and also, you know, our resident shadow worker wanting to unplug from the matrix. Let's 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 pause on that for a second, right? Unplugging from the matrix and allowing ourselves to unplug from the matrix without feeling like we're going to miss anything, without fear, right? Without feeling like, you know, the world's going to go by. I didn't get to do enough work today and I didn't get to the gym today. I didn't have that conversation. I didn't text that person back. My mom went to see me. All these things, right, that happen in the matrix that are here to distract us, that are labeled as distractors. What if we took more time than usual to unplug from these distracting things and hang around with our higher self and hang around in the Akashic realm and hang around in deep meditation and deep thought, right? And hang around with our goals, our aspirations and our dreams. What if we spent more time in that field while Black Moon Lilith is transiting Virgo? What if we got organized up here instead of down here a bit more than normal is what's really coming through. Mm, it feels good to read for you all today, by the way. Nice thing for the messages. Shadow work is very prevalent. We're in Ascension season. We are. I love that Ascension season. And people need to rest and tap into their feminine energies. Agreed. Agreed. The world comes in, one of my favorite cards in the tarot and in the major arcana. This is um, very reflective of the message we had earlier, as above, so below, the first rule of witchcraft, right? When we get to the world in the major arcana, when the fool finally gets to the world, the fool has gone through all these major lessons. The way I teach tarot is the major arcana are the chapters of the book and the minor arcana are the words inside the book. So when we get to the world, we're at the last chapter. And so... Espresso Queen. Hello, hello, everybody. Okay. Where was I? I got cut off before. And so we're doing an intuitive tarot reading on Black Moon Lilith entering Virgo. And we've already pulled a few cards, but where I was is I was at the world, right? This is about when the fool gets to the world card the fool has learned all of these major lessons right and then when he gets to the world this is about starting over again so as black moon Lilith this entered into virgo what we were talking about before i got cut off i have to kind of allow myself to get back here to get back to the space where i was in i was in flow the messages that i feel like are coming through a lot are really about unplugging from the matrix they're really about unplugging from this 3D reality a little bit, which I think is really interesting because I think as spiritual workers and as intuitives and as healers, we spend a lot of time in other worlds and other realms, if you will. 
we're spending too much in the 3D. We're spending too much in the worry is what's coming through. Uh, too much in the headache is, is the word that's coming through. Too much in the physical impulses and reactions. You are timelessness is what's coming through. And somehow we forgot about that. And as I'm saying, you are timelessness is what's coming through. Our two of wands comes in upside down. And you may or may not know our two of wands, right? I love wands in general. Of course, I would. I'm a fire sign. Wands is associated with fire. But when we have the two, we are making plans. We are making plans to go, to go somewhere. We're making plans to do something. The two of wands is about knowing that there's potential here. There's potential for creation. This is the preparation to create, right? You are timeless is what came through as this card came through as well. This card card is coming through upside down and the reason why you are timeless was coming through at the same time it's really hard to explain how the channeling really works but at the same time it was coming through because like we forgot like forgetting how timeless we really are right forgetting our potential and so what's coming through right now is this idea that when we kind of unplug from the matrix unplug from the news unplug from what's wrong unplug from all of the chaos that is happening in this 3d structure it's a push and pull of your efforts is what's coming through right now this push and pull this tug of war that's kind of happening in order to kind of soothe your your nervous system on that level there needs to be a letting go of what's happening in the 3D and really a, a deeper, higher focus on where you want to be, where you desire to be, and where you deserve to be. I find this to be fascinating just because, like I said, Virgo is an earth sign. So whenever we're working with Virgonian energy, we always tend to be working with earthly energy and earthly deities. And this reading is very, very clearly stating that in order for us to ascend, if you will, to reach another level of ascension, to reach another level of expansion, all of that. For those of you who just joined us, our Ten of Cups came up earlier in the reading. For us to really get there, there needs to be an unplugging of the matrix during this time. Mm. Here comes the moon, right? And the moon card is known for showing us... Uh, fabrications for showing us what isn't real to illuminate what isn't real in our lives black moon lilith uh, another word for black moon lilith is illumination right yes yeah, she is the release and she's also the illuminator right because this is black moon lilith right we're not dealing with dark moon lilith if you want to know the difference get the course it's inside the lightworkers academy i go over the difference of all four of the points but what I'm getting at is the moon is coming in. This idea around illuminating what's hidden to us. And Black Moon Lilith has that power. Black Moon Lilith has that uh, availability really to help illuminate what's hidden to our earthly eye, to our naked eye. And, and when we talk about what's hidden, we're talking about the things we hide from ourselves to pacify our desires. To pacify what we desire most, what we deserve most, right? So many of us do this. We pacify what we desire most because we feel like we're supposed to, because we feel like we don't deserve what we want, because we feel like we can't get what we want. There's a number of reasons why we do this. Most people do this on a very subconscious level where they kind of block their blessing and they sit in a space of self-sabotage, of worry, fear, and doubt, and nothing ever gets done when it comes to what they want, when it comes to what they desire, when it comes to what they deserve, and nothing really gets done because they're not doing anything, and they find ways to pacify this need, this want, this yearning to be more what they are right now in that moment because right now in that moment the only thing they're worried about is that actual moment i hope that's making sense what's coming through right now black moon lilith has a way of illuminating when we do that how we do that and in what area of life we do that in she's a road map look at this bad boy Another 10, by the way, my loves, we already got the 10 of cups earlier after we pulled the devil. Now we're pulling another 10 card after we, we pulled the moon card. So now we've got the 10 of swords coming in upside down, right? Now the 10 of cords, it's the 10 of swords right side up is totally let it go. I'm pretty, what, Elsa? Elsa sings that, right? Let it go. 
I will not sing for you guys. I taught a spin class yesterday and my, my throat is still a little hoarse. Um, but that is what the Ten of uh, Swords is, if the Ten of Swords were to be a song. Let it go. It's dead. It's done. It's over with. You are all set. Upside down, there's still some unfinished business here. Okay? There's still some unfinished business here. Babe, well, Black Moon Lilith is in Scorp is in Virgo. In my opinion, looking at this spread, looking at what we pulled, in no specific order, I'm just going to show you all the cards. This is really a time for us to reestablish and re-recognize our potential, to reestablishing our unwavering belief in what we desire and we deserve and the ability for us to get there and the ability for us to have that. And the way that we reestablish this belief, this desire, the way that we actually do this is by unplugging from the 3D matrix, by unplugging from Pachamama for just a little bit and really plugging into the galactic realms, plugging into the starseed realms, plugging into the Akash, right? The angelic realms, plugging in there, talking to Archangel um, Michael, right? connecting to some of these archangels is really what's coming through connecting to metatron connecting to raphael even maybe even doing something on your altar to some of these higher higher deities this is about really balancing out our third eye our throat our crown and our higher crown chakras re-establishing balance and connection within these higher chakras will help the lower chakras that are more here, like down to earth, is what's being said. It'll help create that connection, that flow that we're looking for within the chakra system. It's also doing extra work on these higher chakras is also going to help illuminate that, mood, that moon card coming in. Help illuminate some of the shadows that maybe you've been hiding from yourself around success, around fear of success, around creating more money, around wealth, around um, generational curses and trauma. What's yours and what's not yours? What's just living in your DNA and what's actually yours? That's something I've had to learn and I'm still learning. DNA, is it galactic, galactic or is it earthly? Who knows? But yeah, Black Moon Lilith allows us the opportunity to really work with our shadow. And so I think if you are a shadow worker or an aspiring shadow worker, I wouldn't sleep on this opportunity to hang out with Virgo and Black Moon Lilith in one spot. I really wouldn't. Again, Virgo is our sign of organization, of cleanliness, of orderly conduct, conduct of tidiness, of structure and stability, right? And then we've got Black Moon Lilith, which in astrological terms is this space where we can really discover our shadows and discover who we are and discover maybe what we hide and discover what we hide subconsciously and consciously. That's really important, right? Um, what we're afraid of, what we admire in others that maybe we don't see in ourselves. All of that stuff is, is within our Black Moon Lilith placement. And so when we have Black Moon Lilith transiting Virgo, it's a real opportunity to get clean, to get organized on those pieces of the puzzle that maybe we've had a blind eye to, to go even deeper with the shadow work, to go even deeper with the self-love, self-appreciation and self-awareness, to go even deeper with understanding what the mission is, because that's what why we do this work, to understand what the mission is. And when you can understand what your mission is, and when you can implement your mission clearly and beautifully and soundly, well then, babe, you're doing God's work now, aren't you? I will save this. I'll talk to you soon.